Hey everybody, Joy here. We're going to do part five today. I decided if we're going to make a garment, we need to figure out what we want to make it with. Especially when it's going to have two different fabrics in it. So, a lot of you I know have a stash. If you're a new seamstress, and you decide you like making your clothes and it's lots of fun, you'll soon have a stash too. <laughs> so very back at the very beginning when we started talking about this pattern and this sew along, you saw that I put in there on the bed several things that I thought went together. Well, I changed my mind. <laughs> so I wanted to show you how I play with it. I bring my fabrics out. Sometimes I have to unbolt them and sometimes I don't. This one is heavy, and there's a lot of it. So what I do is I drape myself. So you have to, you have to, you just have to. You have to have a full-length mirror. If you can't find a three-way mirror, at least get a full-length mirror. You can get them for nothing at Walmart and Target. Stand them up across the room because you need close-up, and you need far away. You know, if you want to know if something looks good, put it together, stand far away, play like you're not you. Play like you're sitting across the room and somebody walks in and they have something on. What's your first impression of it? What's the first thing you see? What do you like? What do you not like? But it's really you, of course. <laughs> My mind, I know. So I'm going to put this around me somehow and play like this is going to be the contrast. Then I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to put it, I haven't unfurled this one yet. I haven't unfolded this one yet. So I played with this for a little while. Does this look good? What does it look like from a distance? Is it white enough? Are they both the same black? Or does one look gray and one look black? And so I played with this. I like it, but I don't love it. So then I thought, maybe what I need is a more of a contrast. So then I went in and I got this white one out of my stash and I didn't unroll it yet. So I put it up here like this and then I took this one and I did it like this. So this is one side, this is the contrast at the top and I went, oh yes I like that much better. I like that much better. But then I thought, I have 50 black and white tops. I don't really need another black and white top. <laughs> Let's play some more. But I did decide I like this much better together than the two polka dots together. So then I thought, I had this out on my bed, remember? And I thought, oh, I really, really like this one. And this one's a different knit. It's stretch. Always stretch your stretch and be sure it's like on the pattern. And make sure it's enough on the back of the pattern envelope. And this one, I think, will be, but it's kind of a, let me hold it up real close. It's kind of a, a different knit. It's got like a little waffle weave. I think you can see it in the white leaves. So, I thought, what will this one look like? I thought, well, it's got black in it, and it's got white in it. Huh, maybe it'll look good with this. So, I did this thing again. <laughs> and then I put this up with it, and I actually really like it. I really like it this way. What do y'all think? I thought, I like that a lot. That's really cute. But then I thought, is it enough contrast? Will it look good together? I'm really loving this, and I might do this one. But you can see how I play and how I look. So then I thought, well, there's a bunch of pink in it. Maybe I should make it with the pink. So I went in there and I got my pink. This is what I used the other day for my little triangle. So I've already used it once. And so I draped the pink up here. <laughs> pink draping, there's my sleeve, there's my angle. And then here would be the bottom, see? Oh, you really need to take them off the board, but I hate wrapping them back up. Now you could use green. I think the pink looks really good. 
What do y'all think? Do you like the pink with it? I think it looks real cute. Yeah. See, practice, practice. So, I don't know. I already made something with this pink. So let's try white with it. So here's my white. And here's my this. I really need to unfold it. <laughs> and here's my this. I don't know. I don't think I like that as much as I like the black and the dot and the pink. I don't think so. I think that's too much contrast. So I think my favorite is the black and the white dot. Oh yeah. I think that looks really cute. Here's up close. And then here's far away. <laughs> So let's turn it around now that we've got this off the bolt. Let's put the flowers over here. I can hear my sister Judy hollering, Do this, do that! Do this, do that! <laughs> She'll text me and tell me, This looks much better. So, and then we'll do this as the main. Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! Do we like that? Do we like that better? Oh my goodness, that is really cool. Oh my goodness. <gasps> I think that's what I'm going to have to do. See, you can do it both ways. See, isn't that easy? Presto change -o. Now, what you have, Now, I can't because you need to see me, but I like to turn my mirror and then back off and get across the room like I told you and play like I'm just, I don't know who I am. And I'm just watching this person <laughs> in the mirror, you know, from behind. And um, do I like it or do I not? Oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. Okay, we can't play anymore, but you get the idea. Choosing your fabrics. Oh my gosh, it's going to be fun to see what you all make. I don't even think that many people are making it. My goodness. <laughs> I don't think, maybe nobody. <laughs> but I'm going to make it. So let me get started. I'm having so much fun, I forgot all about you guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Lord knows I can't narrate. I did order a microphone though, so hopefully we'll get that problem fixed. I've been having so much fun. Now, you have to op open this up so it's flat. Because everything's cut flat because it's a whole front. And then it's one piece on the front, a different piece on the back of these little triangle thingies. It doesn't look like it's laying down there very flat. So what I do, I number one lengthened the sleeve to be full length because I think this fabric is so pretty. I wanted it the whole way down my arm and I don't even like long sleeves. <laughs> but this is just the prettiest fabric. So I just lengthened the pattern. I know I need 23 inches, so I added 6 inches on there and put it down to my wrist. And then, because you can see through, and you don't have a front, you don't have two pieces, you just have this one, so it's so fun. You have to keep it on straight a grain still, but you can move it to where you like your print. And I found a place on this where the flowers went diagonal. So I cut mine out on the diagonal. Can you tell there? It's kind of diagonal right there. And oh my goodness, it is so pretty. But pay attention to what I'm going to tell you right now. Because nobody told me to be careful, and I wasn't, and I messed up the first one that I did. You can't cut the sleeve right side up. This is going to be on your left arm in this case, in the view I'm making, view D is in dog, it's going to be on my left arm, so you can't cut it out right side up. I promise you, I know, I have had personal experience. <laughs> Turn it upside down to cut out your left arm. Put it right side up when you're cutting out the other fabric for your right arm, unless you switch sides or something, okay? So I had to cut this out upside down. So you take the sleeve and you 
pin it together, right sides together, so, 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 and turn it the other way around, and then it will fit. Small notch in the front, double notch in the back. Small notch on the sleeve cap, single notch on the sleeve cap means I'm the front. The slit in the middle at the top means this is the center you line me up with the shoulder seam. The double notch, and this is on every pattern, every pattern in the whole wide world that I've ever made. The double notch in the sleeve cap means I'm the back, I'm the back. So it goes back here and the single notch goes up here and the slit goes up here. Did you get that? So I'm sorry, I already cut off the sleeve, but you can see how I did it. I arranged it where I wanted the flowers to be pretty. I decided I didn't want black in a certain place, or I know I'm really weird. Y'all just cut yours out. <laughs> and so now I have these two pieces. Remember, I made mine so it has the little triangle part on the back shoulder instead of just on the front. So I have a front one and a back one. And if you don't make one, you're only going to have a front one. Now make sure everything's flat. Make sure, make sure, make sure. So many make sures with knit. Make sure none of your fabric is hanging off the side of the table because knit stretches and whatever's hanging is stretching. Use your weights. Make sure everything's flat, flat. Yeah, very nice, very nice. So I arranged this because I thought where this joins the black and white dot, I don't want there to be any white there because some of the white dots might line up with this line and then you'd have white going into white and it might look funny. So I wanted to make sure I had color all along this area here and all along this area here. You still have to put it on straight of grain straight of grain. Straight of grain on these two pieces lines up with center back and center front. So easy to find. I put this down here at one end of this gorgeous piece of fabric. I did come up a little ways because I wanted to get out of the white part, but um, I have plenty of this left to make another blouse out of it. Okay, so lay your pattern pieces down one layer of fabric, this is not folded in half. It's just one layer laying flat. Your pieces will cut out so much better that way. When you cut out two layers of knit, one on top of the other, you have it flat like this, you fold it in half, and you cut out almost always the bottom piece will come out a little bit different than the top piece. It's frustrating. <laughs> but knit is very forgiving. And usually you can put the paper pattern up to it and fix it. I'm using my rotary cutter because I've got a cutting mat under here. And somebody, at least one person, is going to ask me where this mat came from. Where did this mat come from? Oh, Lord, I've got the name covered up. You'll have to wait a minute and I'll tell you where the mat came from. <laughs> I think it's called Mega Mat. Slow, slow and easy wins the race. Don't get all fast with a razor blade in your hands. Use your scissors if you like to use scissors. I use scissors forever and ever and ever. There it is. So there's this piece. It's ready to sew on to the black with the white dot. And I haven't cut that part out. This is actually the back, and this is the front. Remember, I drew the back myself. If you don't know about that, watch my last video, um, So Long B6418 Part 4. And you can see how I drew the back. So I would have um, the contrast on the back as well as the front. Now, I really need to be over there where you are for this, but... Lovely day here. Lovely day. 
my husband's out hooking up the cold weather hose to the RV because it's supposed to freeze tonight. We've got to get all my herbs in the garage. I can't really reach very much farther. <laughs> I'm going to try. You want to make sure your things are cut out exact. Not just almost, but exact. They have to be cut out exact if you want a garment that doesn't look like you made it at home. You know, my mom was a really, 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 really good sewer. I don't like the word sewist, but that's what they call it now. So that's all I need out of this beautiful piece of fabric. So I've got this much left. So I started to tell you, my mom, she sewed. She learned to sew in high school. And back then, she grew up in Boston, Massachusetts. And back then, they, just, they didn't teach you just how to sew. They taught you how to make it fit. So mom sewed for her three girls and herself, and she sewed beautifully. But when she would go out, people would compliment her. And mother would say, oh, I made this. And somebody would say, oh my goodness, it looks like ready to wear, like you bought it at a store. And my mother considered that the biggest insult on the planet. She'd say, don't insult my sewing, because the stuff that you buy at the store isn't made near as well <laughs> as what my mother sewed. But the common, ordinary, everyday person doesn't know. It used to really upset me, and I tried to tell my mom, Mom, they mean it as a compliment. You want to say that to me, please do. You say, that looks like ready to wear all day. <gasps> really? That's wonderful. <laughs> Cutting my notches, you got to have your notches. You see this double notch right here? That says this part of the arm goes in the back. This single notch right here says this part of the arm goes in the front. So we're going to put these two pieces aside. We're all done cutting the print. Oh, that's a pretty print. My goodness. I'm going to lay out the black with the white polka dot now, and I'll show you how I lay out and cut the, uh, the bodice. My camera is really low. <laughs> you may think it's not stretching, but it is. And you put your pattern piece up here and you cut it out. And when you lift your pattern piece, it's going to shrink. Because it's going to go back in from where it had been stretched. So pull this up off the table. You're cutting single layer here. So everything wants to hang over the sides because it's big. Now this fabric is from Joanne Fabrics. I guess she's just called Joanne now. And they always have it. I see this every time I go there. I've made something out of this before. I've cut the straight hem. I'm not doing the curved one. So make sure you're flat. Make sure, look at your fabric. Fabric's not always perfect. I have gotten so much fabric that has flaws in it. Oh, all kinds of flaws. Dark marks, places where the sewing didn't sew, places where the print didn't print. Places where somebody decided to draw on it with an ink pen, that happens a lot. Make sure what you're fixing to cut out looks good. And I'm going to put this on that edge right there. I've got kind of a little ripple right here on the side, so I'm not going to put it all the way down. Now I'm going to check straight of grain. Where's straight of grain? Straight of grain is center front. This from here to here needs to be straight on the material. I'm going to put it on a one and come over here to the edge. I'm going to line the edge up with 15 and a half and then I'm going to move this over to the one. My fold. 15 and a half and one. Slap down your ruler. Why do you put it on one? Because to me it's easier to read the line on the one than the edge of the ruler where there's no line. So it's just easier for me to see on the one. These rulers are in my Amazon store. They're wonderful. Buy three or four of them. I have red ones and blue ones. They're both in my store and they're wonderful. And I have them in my coach and I have them here and I have them in the other room. I have them all over the place. <laughs> so does that come out right? One and 15 and a half, that's correct. So now, this is ready to cut out. 
Yes! Oh my gosh, this is going to be so cute! I hope, I hope. Sometimes I think something's going to be so cute and I get it done and I think, good grief. Did I not get any sleep that night or what? <laughs> and I have some nights like that, you know. All right, let me see if there's enough fabric left over to cut the back out. Maybe, maybe. Let's lay it out and see. Then I can save the fabric. And then I can cut out another garment. I think this will fit. A really great thing about these knit fabrics is they are very wide. They're like 60 inches wide. Oh, just love that. Love it, love it. Alrighty. I am going to go ahead and cut out the front because I have to lay this part out flat on the table before I cut it. Okay, so I've just got it all up here. Even here on the end where I'm not cutting, there must be a yard hanging off the end of the table. I'm putting it up on the table too. Let me show you from here. See there? See how the fabric is all up on the table? That's what you want. And I'm going to cut that piece over there flat as a pancake. So let's go ahead and do that. This is so fast to make. It is so fast. Because I'm just going to sew that little flowery piece right on here. Then I'm going to sew the flowery piece on the back. Then I'm going to sew the shoulders together. You all put the bust darts in first. Put the bust darts in first. Put the bust darts in first. But then it's the shoulders and the sides. And that's it. You're ready to hem it. It's wonderful. I'm going to make so many of these. Of course, it's going to kind of look like a uniform. Of course, this one's going to have long sleeves. I was thinking I might try a V-neck. I don't know how that would work, but I might try it. All righty, throw that away. Don't lift this up off of the fabric until you've cut the notches. You want to cut the notches before you lift it. Get your hand out of the way before you start slicing with that razor blade. You know about the lady that ran this thing all the way up her arm. Ouch. Boy, talk about blood on what you're making. Yikes, I bet that was just awful. I wonder if she ever used a rotary cutter again. <laughs> I don't know if I would have. I'm going to go to the other side of the table to cut that side. My tables are from Ken's Sewing Center online. Ken's, K-E-N-S, Ken's, online. I paid five or $600 for them. They're now over a thousand. I believe they are horns, horn tables. But you only have to buy them once. They're very good quality. Cutting all my notches. I just cut the end tails of my darts. Did you see that? I cut that. And that the point the point of my dart is here and then there's a leg that goes out here and a leg that goes out here so I just snipped both of these legs about a quarter inch I'm going to put a pin in the point of the dart and in a minute I will turn this upside down um, it's on a white dot but the back is all white oh good it's gonna show real easy so I'm gonna take one of my friction markers and I'm gonna mark that dot. I'm going to mark a dot right there. And so now I will be able to draw this dart on the back side of this. And it will make it super, super easy to sew together. Let's go to the other side and cut the notches. I just love doing this. I feel like a designer, sort of. I'm not. I mean, if I was, I wouldn't be using somebody else's pattern, would I? I'm a good copier, <laughs> and I love to learn. I have always loved to learn. I'll never forget. I didn't go to kindergarten for some reason, but I went to first grade, and I was the oldest. I was the first one to go, and I had to go out and stand in the front yard and wait for the bus, and I had a little, um, you remember the school boxes that were plaid, and they were red? I don't know if they were red and black, or put that down where it belongs. 
Um, but I had a little red plaid lunchbox. And oh my goodness, I just thought I was the queen of England. My mom told me that I was going to learn stuff there. I'm like, really? I'm going to learn stuff? Oh my gosh. And you got to have Crayolas and pencils. I was in heaven. <laughs> I just loved it. All right. Now, if you're wondering what this is right here, when I trim the neck down, I like to keep the piece that I cut out in case I ever want to add it back on again. So that's what that is. It's where I trimmed the neck. And of course, I trimmed the neck before I did this part. All right. Do you want to see Bumblebee? I do. So we know this is the front, so let's practice our flowers. Let's practice. See, what I do is I'll just run over and sew this together right now because I'm just in such a hurry and I can't stand it. <laughs> so this goes right there. Oh, my goodness, and I did real good. I got a little bit of white right there. What do you think? Some of you are probably thinking, oh my god, that looks terrible. Well, that's why you're you and I'm me. Remember, when I drew this, I made 3 8 inch seam. So I'm going to pin it right here because it's real easy to line up. You've got this little straight part right here and this little straight part right here, and they just go together. So put that part together first. Then come over here under the arm and put that part down. It goes right there to the very, very edge. It's not straight. It doesn't go straight. It turns and it comes in like this. Then you can see the rest of this is going to fit in between. I did not have any trouble sewing this together the other day. Let's hope I don't today. Pin it, pin it, pin it. Put a whole bunch of pins. If you don't, if you like to sew with no pins, then you just go right ahead. But I like to sew in cases like this when you've got these curves going together. <laughs> oh yeah. This is one place where you would not want one of your fabrics to be like 60% stretch and your other one's only 35% stretch. It would be hard to, to get that to go together here. You really want them the same stretch. Could you put a wove in there? No. Somebody's going to tell you you could. I'm going to tell you you can't. Okay. Let me show you real close on the camera. There it is. Pinned. Here it's going to be crooked. It's going to be crooked here. It's just supposed to be. And this hangs off 3 8 inch. See on the back? It hangs off. Three, it hangs off three eighths inch. That's correct. So all this is sewn together. All of this is pinned. I'll take the pins out as I come to them, and we will sew this together. We will use a stretch needle or a ballpoint needle because we are sewing knits, and we will sew that three eighths inch. And I'll be right back to show you. I'm set up here at my Bernina B740. My B740 has an even feed foot, but I'm not even going to use it because you might not have one, and I want you to see it works without it. So I'm going to start 3 8 inch. You need to know where 3 8 inch is. <laughs> 3 8 inch. Mine is the width. Put your needle down. Get a measuring gauge. Get a gauge. You gotta have some gauges. Put it down here and measure. Mine needs to come over here a little bit. Let's try it right there and see if it's 3 8 inch. No, I'm gonna move the needle over one place and let's see if that makes 3 8 inch. Is there a line on my sewing machine? No, not really. There's a quarter and a half and five eighths. I'm going to put it on the stitch length of three because this is a knit and the longer you make your stitch, the easier it is to rip out. How about that? 
So let's go, Joe. Hold your thread, hold your thread. It already ate one of my threads. Oh, I'm not, I, it might not even go. I'm going to stop and start over. Hold your threads, or it will eat the bobbin thread, and it'll make noises and act real weird. So hold both of your threads. Okay, we're at three eighths. Now what we're going to have to do is move our needle back when we get to the five eighths parts. Hold your two threads. One of these looks like brown, not black. Another thing about the fabrics that I chose, and you might want to think about this too, is I can use, I couldn't the other day, but today I can use black thread on both pieces. I'm not using the zigzag here. I'm using a straight stitch because this is just putting this back into one piece and it's not really going to get a lot of stress on it. You can do a little zigzag if you want to, but again, the straight stitch is easier to rip out. <laughs> this is a curve, so go slow. Slow and steady wins the race. Use your hands. Use your hands. Use your hands. Use your hands. Thank God for your hands. They're your very best tools in the whole wide world. See how, see how slow I'm going? If you weren't watching me and I wasn't doing this video, I'd be going just the same exact slow. Because we're going around a curve, we've got to remove the pins, we've got to hold everything in place. This is going right off at 3 8 inch exactly. Alrighty. I have a cutter, but I don't like to use it because it cuts so short. And I like to have two tails to hold on to. So here we go. Here we are. This is the front. And you can see I put a great big rose right there. How about that? I wonder how the white looks down here. <gasps> Look at that! The little white dot didn't run into it. Yay! <laughs> oh, how fun, fun, fun. I'll go get the back and get it cut out. Get this piece that goes with the back. Hey, and guess what I didn't do? I didn't sew the bust darts in even though I told you. You want to see how I do the bust darts? Let me show you. Get a marker. You've got to draw your bust dart in here. So, slap your ruler down. I know my head's cut off, but you aren't, you're not watching this to look at my head. So, get one of these friction markers. Hope it still has some ink in it or whatever it is they use. So, there's my one leg to my dart. Here's my other leg to my dart. This is almost dry. I can barely see it. All right. There's my first dart. I got a different friction marker, so hopefully it's got some ink left in it. I know it didn't ink, but... <laughs> I need to quit taking sewing classes and start taking some video classes and some light classes. <laughs> okay, so here's our dot. And here's our slit, and here's our other slit. Slap your ruler down. Some lady <laughs> said, I don't know why you have to slap your ruler down. Well, if you don't want to slap your ruler down, don't. Now this seam right here, it tells you to press it toward the front. So I'm going to press it down that way, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to top stitch it. I'm going to top stitch it down here so it stays there and I never have to mess with it again, okay? All righty, let's put these bust darts in. You know you got to pin them together. There's your bust dart. You've got a line on that side and look at this is white on the back so it's really easy to see. You're going to make sure this line lines up perfectly with that line and you're going to start at the point. Start at the point and pin it at the point. That tells you where you're going to stop sewing. Some of my pins have sticky stuff on them. Pin your two little 
slits down here, your slits, pin those together. Now this dart should fold properly. You don't want it with bumps, no wrinkles, no bumps. It has to be perfectly, perfectly flat. Perfectly flat and even. Yes. So now you're going to start putting the pins in here. You can't see the other side, so you're going to turn it over and look. <gasps> that didn't match. Now I've got it in this side, and it's going through that side on my blue line, so I am going to pin it. Let's do another one. I pin it down, make sure it's on the line, it's a little bit past it, fold it a little bit, tiny, tiny bit different. It's a little itty bitty teeny bit high or low or something. I just keep on doing it until I get exactly exactly. Because I'm just picky about everything. And this seems to be tricky. So do it from the other side. Okay, now I'm going right through the center of that blue line. Some people pin it different. Yep, they do. Some people pin it like this, and it's actually nice to pin it that way if you can get it exactly, exactly, and I think I did. Let me see if I got it exactly, exactly. I did, because this pin takes up this much room, so you can't sew there until you remove that pin. But for making sure it matches, that's what I'm going to do to start with. Let me see if this one lines up perfect. Yep. Once you get the top started, the rest of it usually just falls into proper, proper lining, proper lining up. So I have it pinned. The two lines are sitting right on top of each other. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to sew this with let me see, do I want my little zigzag? No, I want a straight stitch here, so I'm going to use my number three stitch length. See that pin? I've already got to move it. Put the pin cushions close by. Move the pin before you sew over that part. You can throw the timing off on your machine, and if you do, you will have to have a repair person. And I don't have one that lives with me. I don't like the one that I recently found. I'm not ever taking a machine back there. So, I'll probably have to go to Oklahoma City to John Ramsey, my brain dealer up there. I did not like the way I was treated at that store in um, Plano. I thought they were extremely rude to me. <clears throat> extremely. Didn't listen to what I said to him. Grabbed my machine and took it away from me without my permission. Didn't even listen to me when I told him that the man had called me and told me that he would meet me there. The girl just grabbed my machine and so I started to follow her. She said, you can't come. I mean, rude, rude. Then the other people there didn't even speak to me. Been there twice and both times I was unimpressed unimpressed. I'm just going to pin this dart exact same way I pinned the last one. But the thing about it is you need a dealer. You need a dealer. These are very expensive machines and you need somebody that you can trust that isn't going to cheat you, isn't going to fix something that isn't really broken. Oh. You have to have somebody you can trust. And you know, I had taken my machine in to have it fixed. I got it home, and it worked worse than it did before I took it in. And then I took it in, and they pretty much told me it was my fault. Ugh. It was my fault. Why is it suddenly working again after he did whatever he did to it the second time? Anyway, I know a lot of women have that issue. A lot of women. They've got some really nice employees in the Oklahoma City Bernina store. And, of course, the uh, Baby Lock dealer there can sell Berninas now. And um, I know them very well. I can't even see my line, you guys. It is so faint, I can't even see the thing. <laughs> I'm going to guess where it is. 
Oh my heavens. I need to throw the purple one away, Joy. It isn't right. I just ordered the fine line version. I'm not excited with the fine line version. It's okay. We'll see how long it lasts. Now, Peggy Sagers always starts. There she goes with Peggy Sagers again. Hey, I watch her every other Tuesday night and every Thursday. <laughs> feel like she's my best friend. Um, she starts at the point. I don't. I end at the point and start at the legs. So here we are with the front. We have the two darts in. Dart number one. Dart number two. And we got the opposite fabric, the contrast fabric on the top. I'm going to go get the back and I'm going to sew this piece to the back. I'll be right back. Remember, you have another sleeve to cut out and your other sleeve comes out of this fabric. It's my sleeve pattern. So I'm gonna have to cut it out. Here's my back. Boy, these flat patterns where you just cut out one layer, oh, it's so nice. Now I don't have any bust darts in this. So I don't have to do anything but sew this top piece on and I'll have a full back. Oh yeah. You have to have music on, but you're not allowed to have music on on a YouTube video. It's against the law. I don't know whose law, Burke's law. Any of you old enough to remember Burke's law? <laughs> and 77 Sunset Strip. Oh, you got to be really old. Remember that. Yeah, if I was straight across the bottom, which I'm not, but if I was, I would cut it so that selvage was the hem. You wouldn't have to hem it that way. How awesome would that be? Cut out your notches. Notch notch. Here's your double notch on your armhole. Where does the double notch go? In the back. That's why it's on the back. Cut your notches, cut your notches. I haven't cut over there yet. Keep your hand behind the razor blade. <laughs> Stay away from it. When you're rolling it. When you're rolling it. So I've got this cut out. See, very, very easy. You know, I like it's square or rectangle, doesn't matter. Just cut it. Come on over here to cut these notches. There we go. So these two notches match these two notches match the two notches on the side seam of the front. Those two notches over there match the side seam of the front. You have two sides on your body, right? All right, I've already cut out the piece that goes up here, so all I have left now is the sleeve. Flatten everything back out. Make sure your fabric's not hanging over anywhere. Let's cut it over here on this edge, and then that leaves me the most fabric that I could put another sleeve on for another top. Does that make sense? Now a lot of you, if you buy just the amount of fabric that the pattern tells you to, the pattern always gives you a picture of how to lay it out. It gives you choices of, of course with knits it's probably always going to be 60 inch layout, but you can look at the pictures inside the pattern. Now, when I cut the opposite sleeve, I had to lay this upside down, remember? So now I'm going to do it upside up, <laughs> right side up this time. Yeah, get it relatively on the straighter grain. Slap down your ruler, run this on the straighter grain, see if it lines up, lines up. It needs to come down a little bit like that. I'm going to move it up as far as I can. Oh, I'll have this done in another... I'll have it put together in like 15 minutes, and then we got to do all the hems, see? The hems? The hems take the longest. The hems take way longer than what I'm doing right now. 
Plus you have to measure, 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 measure. You have to put your steam seam on. Then you have to iron your steam seam down. Yeah, that's what you have to do. All right, we're free on this side. Let's get this. Keep your table out, away from the wall. Have just one end on the wall, because you need to be able to walk around your table for cutting. Yeah, makes it so much easier to cut. There we go. Use a ruler if you feel like you can't cut straight. I'll just go back and fix it, okay? So now we're coming around here and it wants to wrinkle up, so I'm going to put a pin. I cut my notches in. Hard to break an old habit. I don't remember, I think my mom cut her paper notches out. I don't remember how she did them on her pants. My mom didn't teach us how to sew. She had three girls. But she did not teach. I don't know if she taught my other sisters. I don't know if she taught my sisters, but she never taught me how to sew. I learned in high school. I made the ugliest dress you ever saw. <laughs> it was. It was made out of uh, canvas. We didn't have much money back then. And I'm sure my mom had to buy whatever was on the cheapest sale table. And it was a horrible color for me. It was a color Jerry could wear. Kind of a real dark teal color. And it was the consistency of cardboard. <laughs> you're making a woven dress of some sort. I'll tell you what, that's the ugliest dress. <laughs> okay. Very good. So now, Notice on your sleeve, I showed you this before. The double notch is the back. The slit in the top is the center. And the single notch is the front. So, let's get both the sleeves and get them sewn together. This is sleeve two. Now this sleeve is not as thick as this sleeve. So one of my arms is gonna be warmer than the other arm. <laughs> Now we're going back to 5 8 inch seam allowance now. Don't forget that. 5 8 inch. Pin at the 5 8 inch line. You know, guesstimate. You know what a half inch looks like. You know what a quarter inch looks like. Now what I do down here on the hem, I always mark it. Get your ruler. I'll show you in the camera up close after I draw this line. Draw your seam line. Turn it the other way, follow your garment, and mark your other seam line. This will help you so much, know where to stop sewing, and that should be one inch. I always do this on hems. This intersection right here is what you need. If you're going to sew there, then you're going to turn, and you're going to sew down this way. This, you don't need this and you don't need this, that's just extra. But what you want right there is that intersection. Because that allows you to fold the hem up later and have it fit perfectly in to your sleeve. Will I use a straight seam for this? No. From now on, I'm going to use the little zigzag. It's going to be on like the zigzag width of a one and the length of a three or a three and a half because I will be stretching this sleeve for sure. I will be stretching the sleeve, pulling it up my arm, and I don't want the threads to pop. I put lots of pins. You've sewn so long, do you have to put so many pins? Yep. I want it right. <laughs> I want it right the first time. I don't want to have to say, oh my goodness, I got that crooked, or it moved, or it slid around, or Whatever. Now here again, i got to draw my lines. Get your ruler. Get your marker. Draw your line. 
I made my hem one inch. I think yours is one and a quarter on the pattern. But remember, I was using a three quarter sleeve and I just lengthened it instead of, you know, going back and starting over with the original sleeve because the original sleeve was totally wrong for me anyway. When you get to this point, when you sew these sleeves up, pull them both up. If you've got arms that are different from each other, they're both the same, I guess you can just pull one up. I'll show you. I'm going to do it in a minute. Something I can practice on, you'll act us on. This song is paper. Okay, you sew on paper? Oh, yeah. Mm. I want that a little closer together. So I'm going to go down to 275. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you can sew on paper. You can make cards on paper. Oh, my gosh, you want to have fun. Do some embroidery on cards and give those to somebody. <laughs> But then when they throw it in the trash or the burn pile, it's like, no, I spent forever on that. <laughs> You're going to give somebody something. Now, this black doesn't look real good on this because it's mostly white, but we're going to still use the black thread. All right, we're going to go up there to that little place. Then we're going to turn, pull out my pen, and go the rest of the way. Eighths inch, and when you sew your 5 8 inch, don't put your fabric over the 5 8 inch line, put it to the left of it. You should be able to see the 5 8 inch line when you're sewing. You should be able to see it next to your fabric as your fabric's flying by it. You should be able to see that line definitely, otherwise, you're going to be sewing more than a 5 8 inch. Yep. Here we are, all the way to the top. You don't have to back stitch. That's going to be inside another seam. You don't have to back stitch at the bottom either. And besides that, it's easier to take it out. So here I've got my sleeve. And it's, oh, it looks narrow, but I'm narrow. It looks narrow, doesn't it? But if I pull it up like, ooh, it's a little tight. All right, see what I mean? Look how tight that is. I got it a little bit snug because I wanted it narrow down here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to figure out where does it start getting tight. Where does it start getting tight? Got plenty of room in the elbow. About right here. And I like it narrow there because I can pull it up. But I think I could pull it up even. Yeah. I'm going to start right here. And that's about halfway, I would say. Halfway. Yeah, I'd say about halfway up because you need to do it on both sides. And I'm going to go to a half inch because I need more room. 35% stretch is not much stretch. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to get narrower. I'm going to go down to a quarter inch. Okay, so a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. And I'm going into 3 eighths inch. That might still be too tight. And I actually put the paper up on my arm and it fit, so. Everything, fabrics are just different, y'all. It fits me fine up there. But I always think, oh, my wrists are so little, I need to narrow that down for my little wrist. So see, I hope you can see, maybe that side. See how I just went back up there and joined, and then I got little, littler, 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 and now I'm going to take my other sleeve, <clears throat> where is my other sleeve, and I'm going to mark on it the same place, right there. That's where I got littler, right there. Right there is where you start to narrow. Yeah. There you can see my 3 8 inch mark I've made now. Over there I did 5 8 I'm going to sew it at 3 8 because it's too tight. 
I'm so used to sewing with ITY knits, which have a 100% stretch. <laughs> and I'm always having to take the sleeves in, 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 in. So this is just really different. Different knits are different. Different wovens are different. I don't know why. It's just the nature of the beast. Yeah, I'm gonna have to tear out some stitches. Oh yeah. <laughs> I definitely am. Okay, so I know right there we're going to go on the five eighths, and then I'm gonna go littler and littler and littler. Now, so how much will I be gaining? If you go from 5 8 to 3 8 you've gained a quarter inch. And since you're doing it on two pieces of material, you've gained a half inch. So we'll see how that goes. Am I there yet? Nope. One more stitch. That's why I like my open toe foot. As you can see what you're doing. I've got ease. I've got two inches. You want two inches up here. Two inches of ease. I've got it. Down here, I've got, I've got two. And so will I be able to pull it up? Yes. Easily. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. So now what you have to do is rip it, rip it, rip it on your other sleeve. You have to do rip it duty. So I'm going to turn you on while I do rip it duty. Something I always do. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do it at all, but it's something I always do. <laughs> Once I have the sleeve sewn together, I've pulled it up on my body. It's still a tad tight, a tad. But if I just let it stay long and don't try to pull it up, it'll be perfect. So I trimmed it down. I'm not going to serge it. I don't need all that extra thread in here, and it stretches just fine. So I trimmed it down to 3 8 inch. So now that it's just this little bitty sleeve and I don't have the whole garment attached to it, I'm going to hem it. So I've got my sleeve board. If there's not a sleeve board in my Amazon store now, I'll put one in it. Somebody must have bought something. I think I got $26. Did I get $26? My goodness, that's awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to hem up this sleeve. Now, am I going to press it one way or the other? I'm going to press it open. I am just going to press it open. That's what I'm going to do. I need the clean bottom of my iron. Whenever you use steam machine, it's something you're ready to do. This iron, this ironing board, they're expensive. But like everything else, if you are going to sew, you need to have good equipment. And everything's more expensive now. It just is. So I put a one inch hem in my sleeve. I've pressed that seam flat. I'm going to get some steam a seam too light. Steam a seam too light. Let me show it to you in the box. This is it in the box. It's rolls. It comes in rolls. The half inch comes in one roll, the quarter inch comes in two rolls. And you can see up here, one quarter inch, and over here, one half inch. I use both sizes. It's wonderful stuff, you need to buy about a thousand yards of it. <laughs> it is in my Amazon store, and notice it's light, L-I-T-E, light, Dima Seam 2. I don't know what the two is for, Nobody's ever told me what the two is for. So, you're going to put this down here, and it sticks just a little bit at first, but then you've got to iron it. You're going to iron it down a whole lot more once you get the paper off of it. But to start with, hold it down one or two seconds. That's all you need. I'm putting it around the very, very edge, the very, very edge. My sleeve is inside out. This stuff will stretch. It will stretch with your garment. It's just fabulous stuff. Whoever invented this needs to have a really big reward. <laughs> All 
All right, so then you cut this. Once you're the whole way around, you cut it. Now, what you have done is you have ironed a line of glue all the way around the very bottom. The very bottom. Here, the very, very bottom. You've ironed a line of glue all around the very, very bottom. You're going to fold it up and you're going to iron it down and it's going to stay. You still will want to go and sew it with your zigzag stitch or with your um, cover stitch machine. Do I use my cover stitch machine? Yes, I do. My wrists are so little, I can't even get this up there on it. So, <laughs> I'm just going to use my regular sewing machine. I'm not going to use my cover stitch. Now, where I really do like to use my cover stitch is on the hem of the blouse. So I'm going to fold it up. I know I allowed one inch for a hem. So I'm going to get my gauge and I'm going to put it at one inch. And if you've got a good gauge, it'll stay there. And then I'm going to measure one inch, one inch, one inch. Press it. This is called steam a seam because when you steam steam it and you hold it down for, I don't know, five, ten seconds, it becomes permanent. However, it still can come out in the wash and the dryer, because, especially the dryer because the dryer is hot. So I always go ahead, it's, it's super, super easy to sew the hem in after you have it glued down. That's why I do it. You don't have to have any pins, you just fly around it and it's done. And if the sticky stuff comes unstuck sometime in the future, who cares? Because the stitching will hold your sleeve. The stitching will hold your sleeve. These are so tiny. I'm so used to using an IPY knit that stretches across the room. So there's my hem. How long did that take me? Less than a minute? Hey, doesn't that look nice? I really like that. I like that it's slender because I always feel like sleeves make me look so wide because they add to your, you know, how fat you are. They add to it. So if it's a narrow sleeve and, you know, you hold your arm out like this all the time, then people will know. <laughs> oh, you're crazy, Joy. You're just crazy. I've heard it before. Now, my sleeve is all done. Once I sew this in to the blouse, that's it. I'm done with it. Well, I am going to go sew around the hem. <laughs> I am going to go do that, but I'll turn the camera around. This is take three on this simple task of hemming inside this sleeve. The sleeve is right side out. We're pulling it open and we're sewing on the inside because there's no way this little tiny sleeve is going to fit over my free arm there. So the thread broke three times. Why did it do that? Several reasons. Number one, the bobbin was almost empty. Number two, the thread in the bobbin was a different kind of thread than the thread I had on the top. You want to be sure that you're using the same kind of thread, top and bottom. It hadn't bothered me yet, but I hadn't been doing a hem yet either. So we're going to try again, see if we fixed it. <laughs> ah, cross something. All right, stretch it just a tiny bit I'm using my open toe foot. And it's not going to break anymore. It already broke. Look at that. My thread just broke again. So you all think, oh, well, you have a brand new machine. You have one of those expensive machines. Yeah, well, look at it. It's making a huge mess. What's wrong with it? Let me turn the camera off and do some more investigation. <laughs> okay, fourth try. I just gave up on this sleeve. <laughs> it was still shredding. Something was shredding my thread. I changed the needle. I already changed the thread. I made sure I have the same thread on the top and the bottom. I made sure my bobbin is not almost empty. The bobbin's full. My spool is full. They're the same thread. I changed the needle. I sewed this, it sewed just great. So <laughs> we'll go back to this one again. I have a 7511 Schmetz stretch needle. 
okay, I ran out of battery. And I have no idea how long ago it was. <laughs> oh. You can put it on your mannequin or you can put it on yourself and you can decide, oh, I made a horrible mistake. That is horrible. I'm going to take all of that pink off and put white up there or whatever. You don't have to finish the blouse. It's not sewn together at the shoulders. It's not sewn together on the sides. The sleeves are just pinned up there. So you can still change your mind if you don't like it. But I think I do like it. I think it's cute. I think it's different. Let's look at it up closer and see. I have arms for Lucy. Someday I should put her arms on. So now I'm thinking maybe I should have put the polka dots on the shoulder and the bright flowers down at the bottom. I don't know. <laughs> so I'll have to figure out what the battery died on and, and then get back with you. So when the battery went dead, I was telling you I have pressed this flower piece down into the garment. That's what it tells you to do. Now I'm going to top stitch it. Let me tell you top stitching, boo-boos. <laughs> My worst one is not getting it narrow enough and I'll turn it back over and I'll see that I've missed a bunch of it and I haven't caught it. So be sure that where you're going to top stitch it is going to catch it well. <laughs> I'm using my open toe foot because that's what I like to use and I'm using a 3.35 stitch and I am going to move the needle over one space to make sure that I'm going to catch this good. Remember, I've changed the needle, I've changed the stitch plate, you may have missed that. I don't know when my battery went dead. So go slow, stretch it just the slightest bit, and make sure both sides of that seam allowance are staying down. Keep lifting it and checking it. Because I tell you, if you don't, you'll get this all sewn. You'll think you've done such a great job. You'll turn it over and find out that half of it's flipped up. Half of it didn't even stitch. <laughs> oh, and you'll think, I'm terrible. I'm never going to sew anything again as long as I am. No. What you do is you make a note in your brain. Next time, be sure to check this. Next time, be sure to do this instead of that. You see what I'm saying? Now the first one, I did the front first and I had to rip out and start over. Part of it was flipped up, but you can see that one turned out just fine. It's all sewn down. Well, how did I get this one so good? I got it good because the first one I screwed up twice. <laughs> It's the truth, Ruth. <laughs> Alright, here's the first one. And I sewed it a little too close to the edge, and it does not look as good. But it's very hard to rip this stitch out, so it's staying like it is. And the front isn't going to show with the back, and as picky as I am, I'm still leaving it. Alright, I'm going to sew the shoulders together. I'm going to sew both side seams together. Alright, let's clear you and let's put you back on 3.0 and let's put you on a zigzag. Zigzag. Yes, my zigzag is 1.4 and I'm at 2.75. I am going to zigzag the shoulder. Am I going to reinforce it with stay tape? No. If you have quality fabric, you shouldn't have to stay that shoulder. And if you will sew it with a straight stitch, <laughs> the straight stitch isn't going to stretch, so that will already be stay tame. So mine will stretch, but just a tad, and it has excellent recovery. So I'm not worried about the shoulder seam stretching out. You do what you want to with yours. Now here's the two flowers going together up here at the top. Am I crazy about this? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, it's just like with quilting. I never like my quilt. <laughs> and I'm done quilting them on the long arm. I always think, this looks terrible. It's 
got so many mistakes. I should have done this and I should have done that. But then later, I get the quilt off the shelf to hang it up, like my owl's over there, and I'm just like, oh, I can't even believe I made this. And that's the truth. I can't. I was a new quilter when I did those owls, and I did everything on it freehand, no computer. I'm like, wow, that was pretty good, Joy. <laughs> but while I was doing it, ah, we're hard on ourselves. Well, some people aren't, but I am. I always think I could have done better, I should have done it different, I should have used blue instead of green, I should have not used these flowers, I should have not used these polka dots. <laughs> <laughs> You're a 72 year old granny. This is going to look pretty wild on you. We'll see. We'll see. I have made a lot of friends out there having this YouTube channel. And I sure do appreciate y'all's nice comments. My goodness sakes. And I sort of have to apologize because I put a lot of commercials in these so longs. Because if you watch the commercials, I'll get a real nice check, and that'll help me pay <laughs> for all that fabric I bought and my new whiteboard that I bought. And I actually had to buy a new speaker because I can't do narration. I don't have anything to do narration but that $12 little camera up there that I do Zoom classes with. And it works fine for that, but it's just horrible for narrating. Oh my goodness. If I could have figured out what to do, I would have, but I never did figure it out. Okay, here we go with the zigzag. Come on now. I got a hump there. It doesn't want to jump over. Jump up over that hump. You know what to do when you have humps? You get your lifter upper, your foot lifter upper in the back. You'll have one in your sewing stuff. I have one, but I'm always too lazy to go. To you know, you can use a needle thing like this, your needle box, if you have a big hump to go over. The foot, your foot, this thing, has to be level to sew. When you have humps, and my humps are where I've got the, um, I've got that decorative part. It's got a seam allowance, so it's two layers, and then there's another layer that it's on top of. Then there's the thread holding it down. So I've got six layers of fabric right there. So that's what the hump is about. Okay, so side seam in. This one doesn't have the hump. That one's on the other side. So this one's just got the bus dark hump. You gotta sew it. You gotta sew it in. Oh yeah. But not a problem. And remember, you should be able to see the 5 8 inch line. Don't sew over it or you'll be sewing a deeper seam allowance. We spent all that time fixing this thing. We don't want to mess it up now. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right. And there we go. There's that side seam. It stretches because you sewed it with a zigzag and you want it to. So I'm going to go put it on my body now. Very simple. Once you get these two patches sewn on, it's the shoulders and the side seams. It's done. Except for putting the sleeves in and the sleeves are already hemmed. Actually what I can do is I can hem the neck of this and I can hem the bottom of it before I put the sleeves in it. So, but it's after five o'clock. And I probably should quit and go see if my husband needs some supper. Hey, 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 what do you think? What do you think? So far, I have no mirror. I can't even tell. What do y'all think? Do you like it? So far, let's put the sleeves up and see if we like it. I can't see it. What do y'all think? See if you get to this point and you think, oh, I hate sleeves. I don't like those sleeves at all. Buy extra fabric. Always buy an extra half yard of fabric. I always buy two yards and I probably only need one. Huh? I want to go look in the mirror and see if I like it. 
You saw it before me. <laughs> oh my goodness, I don't know what you all thought, but I think it is the cutest thing on the planet. <laughs> With the two sleeves, I'm still not going to put the sleeves in. I'm going to hem the neck now. How do I hem the neck? I use steam a seam to light one quarter inch. My friend Judy Kessinger likes one half inch because her seam allowances are all one half inch. And this is actually a one half inch seam allowance too. But just in case, I don't want a half inch of glue if I don't, you know, get it exactly, exactly right. So I'm inside out, I've got my neck. I'm just going to fold the neck in. You know, I've already narrowed the neck. I've already lowered the neck. And I know I want it to be one half inch. So, on the very edge of the neckline, I'm going to put the steam a seam. If something's stuck to it, cut that part off. You can get it around a curve. You might have to clip it. Sometimes if the curve is loose, you don't have to clip. It just goes. See, that's just going. It's going real good. Iron that down right there on the edge. Oh, I did not cut the shoulder seams down yet. Am I going to serge them? All right, so now I have serged the shoulder seams. I press. Now this is, this is different strokes for different folks, what I'm about to tell you. Most sewing teachers will tell you to press the shoulder seams to the back. This is a purchased garment, and they're actually pressed to the front. Most sewing teachers will tell you to press the shoulder seams back. No, I don't remember who it is. I think it might be Linda Lee. Said press your shoulder seams to the front, and then you won't have that ditch that shows up because you will have the shoulder seam to fill it up and the ditch will be in the back then. Look at some of your tops and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I've put the tape, the sticky tape down there. I haven't pulled the paper off it yet. I'm gonna turn it over to the other side and I'm gonna put the tape down on it. Okay, let's put this on fast forward. Doing the same thing, putting down the steam machine. Then I remove the paper and then I press it down. Yay! Now, I have a smaller one of these over in my coach. In fact, I think I'm going to use that one. I have one half this size in the coach, and I like it better for this. But since it's over there, we're going to use this one. You are not flat right here. You are curved. You're not flat in the back, you're curved. So you want to use a curve to get this seam down where it goes. And we want it at one half inch. So get your gauge. This is easy. Get your gauge. You might have to fiddle with it right at the shoulders, but start in the center front and the center back and get them placed. Get yourself a couple pins. But I don't have any pins, Joy. I'll get some. Get yourself some pins. getting light. It's getting very late, but I want to finish this. You know, it's really not. The time's getting ready to change. What, in another week? And we're going to fall back. So it's really going to be an hour earlier right now. Instead of 5.30, it's going to be 4.30. That's what I'm telling my husband. It's not time for supper yet, honey. It's only 4.30. He's so sweet. He wouldn't care if I never fixed him dinner. He'd just fix it for himself. But you don't want to eat something he fixes. He knows how to boil water, and he knows how to make, um, is it Gerardo? What's that kind of pizza that's like, it's like delivery? I want to say Gerardo, but that, I'm sure that isn't right. Did you hear the I'm pretty sure it's not Gerardo. And I can hear you hollering at me what it is. I think it starts with a G. Okay, so I have glued down the center front right here, just from here to here. The rest is loose. 
I'm going to go around to the back now and I'm going to glue down the center of the back. Why? Because I know that's the proper position for those places. The shoulders are a curve and um, move around a lot. Yep, that's that. One half. Let's get this at one half. One half. One half, one half, one half. I have the center front and the center back. Steamed, steam a seam. Remember, it's steam a seam. The steam makes it glue. The steam melts it really good and makes it stay. So you can see the back and the front. So now we're going to turn it sideways. Here's the front, here's the back. And so now we're going to work on the shoulders. The shoulder goes to the front, so look for your bust dart, aim it that way. Now, what I do, this is what I do. <laughs> Nobody has to do this but me. But I cut back one half inch on the seam allowance. I cut back one half inch and I aim the main part toward the front, but now this is going to fold over and I don't want it double there. So I fold that part I just cut, I fold it to the back. That's just me. I have never seen anyone else do that ever. It's just me. To me it makes it lay flatter and it's not as big of a bump. I even trim it down, cut the thread off of it. Sometimes I don't get the steam seam in that area. Yeah, one half inch. Let's half inch you. That's not half an inch. I'm going to trim that down some more. Remember, knits don't ravel. Just don't cut past the seam line. Okay, so I'm going to make this behave even though it doesn't want to. This is the curve at the shoulder. It wants to, needs to be half an inch too, but it doesn't want to be. So if you can't get it to go all the way, all the way, then do, do the best you can. Pin. You'll have to fiddle with it. It's not instant. Sewing is not instant. <laughs> At least it isn't for me. If you have instant results, well, hey, you teach me how to sew. Hmm? All right, ironing down this shoulder right here. The steam is in right there at the shoulder. I want it to stay. Stay, stay, stay. The shoulder's the hardest, usually. Depending on the curves. Yeah, this looks great. Half inch, half inch, half inch. It's beautiful. I am not bad. Mm, 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 mm. That looks good. That looks real good. Now let's do the other side from the shoulder to the center front. Put you down at half an inch. I think your pattern will tell you five eighths. I'm doing one half inch because one half inch is easier than five eighths. <laughs> and I've trimmed my shoulder down anyway. I've trimmed my neckline down. So my neckline's already lower. Half inch. There we go. So we are done. From here all the way around to here, we're done. This is the neckline. So now we're going to go over to this other shoulder. And we're going to be careful with the bottom that we don't wrinkle it all up because it's still warm. We're going to put this on top of it nice and neat. And we're going to work on this shoulder now. Now the boob dart's over there now. So we're going to fold this a different way. Hey everybody. I have a new microphone. I don't know how to use it yet. But let's see if it works.
you're going to see me finish hemming around this neckline it's the same thing over and over and over and over i do shoulders and center front and center back and then i do the in between i do the same thing when i hem the bottom of the blouse so i like mine to be just 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 as you all know are you ready looky here that's the back <laughs> and this is the front see isn't it smooth and soft there's the shoulders get them in the camera joy there's the shoulders and turn it around to the right side. I'm still going to serge these side seams before I put the sleeves in. Here is the right side. See? That wasn't even done yet when I just tried it on. But didn't it turn out good? Oh! I'm so excited. <laughs> now we're going to hem the bottom. The bottom is the exact, exact same thing. Exact. Only the bottom is an inch or an inch and a quarter or whatever, however much you want it to be. You might want to use the half inch steam seam down there. But you do it the same, 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 same way. I'm going to try it on again probably in the morning and see how short or how long I want it before I hem it up because I've cut it straight on the bottom instead of that curvy thing. Okay? Are you excited yet? <laughs> this is the next morning. <laughs> Let's hope the sewing machine works today, and let's hope the cameras work today. <laughs> and look at this so long done. So I have one sleeve pinned in. I have the polka dot side pinned in. So I'm going to do the other one now, so you can see how I do it. But you can see, it fits in here fine, if you know how to get it in. But the sleeve itself, the distance all the way around the sleeve, all the way around here should be at least a half inch bigger I think mine's maybe be an inch bigger because that other one I kind of had to fiddle with a little bit but I know remember that I, I had two small sleeves on this one I put it on this morning and I just can't stand the sleeve so they evidently got some more of this fabric in at girl Charlie so I ordered some more of this fabric and I will take those sleeves out and make them the right size. If you didn't see that video, what happened was I only had one yard of this fabric and I didn't have enough to cut the whole width of the sleeve. So I just, I thought, oh, I'll just make it smaller. It's knit, it will stretch. No, you need two inches. You need two inches. This is the same pattern. You need two inches extra, especially up here. In your sleeve if you want to be able to move I can't move in that one <laughs> all right so here's the other sleeve now this is how I put sleeves in okay I have my side seam sewn and my shoulder sewn and I put the circular sleeve into the circular armhole that's how I do it. A lot of people like to put the sleeve in flat and just have the shoulder seam sewn in the blouse and then sew the sleeve in all around. And then what they do is the sleeve will be like this and it will be like this and it'll be all sewn in there. And then they'll just sew from the bottom of the garment all the way up, up, up and into the sleeve and all the way down the sleeve. I don't like to do it like that. I just don't. I don't know why. Um, maybe I think it's easier to take back out if you need to. I've had to remove sleeves. Oh yeah. So this is how I do it. I have my garment inside out. This is the inside of the garment. I have my sleeve right side out. Right side out sleeve, inside out garment. Be very sure, especially on your first sleeve, that when you put it in, that your single notch matches up 
to your single notch in the armhole. If you have a double notch in the garment and a single notch here, they don't match. That sleeve goes on the other side, okay? Be sure and think about that. What I do on my side seams is I always press them back because I don't want them pressed toward the bust start. I press my side seams back and then I make sure that I press my sleeve seam and I've lost my sleeve. <laughs> I make sure I press my sleeve seam toward the front. How do I know the front? By the single notch. So my sleeve seam goes toward the single notch because you know I hem the bottom of the sleeve first. So I need to know what way that seam is supposed to go when I hem the bottom. So now I'm going to take the underarm seam. There's only one seam in this sleeve. Sometimes they have two. One seam. It goes under here. I'm going to find the underarm seam of the top. Underarm seam of the top. Underarm seam of the sleeve. And I'm going to stick the sleeve in the hole. Stick it down in there. And line up. This is the first thing I line up is these two seams. I make sure the finished seam in the garment is going toward the back, like I said, and I make sure the seam in the sleeve is going toward the front because I want them to butt up to each other like this. I don't want them on top of each other. That's too many layers of material and too much thread. So I like mine to be like in a quilt and I like them to go opposite directions. So that's the first thing I pin. And I pin both sides to make sure the seams stay where I want them to be. So I've got two pins in. That one's not holding that seam down very good. I'm moving it. Where do I put my pins? I put my pins on the 5 8 inch line. And I take very tiny bites because I want them to stay. I don't want the fabric moving up and down on the pin. So what's the next thing I do? I've got the sleeve pinned to the garment right here under the arm. Now I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to find the little slit I made in the top of the sleeve and I'm going to match it up to the top of the garment. So here is my slit. There it is right there. Here is the seam, my shoulder seam right here. We're looking for this end of the shoulder seam and there it is. And the shoulder seam, I've already finished the neck, so the shoulder seam's pressed toward the front and it's permanent because I've got that sewn at the neckline. So I'm going to line up that little slit that's the top of the sleeve with that seam in the top. And I'm going to put another pin at the 5 8 inch line and I'm going to take a little bite. Now, we are attached here and here. We are attached here and here. Now I am going to make the sleeve fit between those two points, front and back. And since this is a knit and you only need about a half inch extra, you don't have a whole lot to fiddle with. Now the notches, if you made your pattern real good, <laughs> the notches should line up. But if they don't, don't worry about it. Make it smooth under the arm. Don't make any extra fabric in either piece. Just pin it smooth from under here to your notches. Pin it smooth from here to the front notch and from there to the back notch. Just two pieces together even. And mine actually match up, which is a wonder of wonders. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pin it to the notches and I'm going to stop at the notches. Alright, I now have it pinned evenly to the notches. Front notch and back notches. Now I have extra. I have more sleeve than I have armhole. So I am going to make that fit in there. That's where you need your extra ease. So what? you have stretchy material. I'm just going to stretch the top a little bit and I'm not going to stretch the sleeve. Stretch the top a little bit 
but not the sleeve. So when you're sewing it, you can stretch it and sew it. You'll see, I'll show you how I do it. 5 8 inch, a little bite. The uh, black with the white dot is quite a bit stretchier than this is. It had more ease. See, that's extra ease. I'm just going to stretch the blouse, not the sleeve. Stretch the blouse, not the sleeve. And make that fit. See there how it fits? It fits just fine. You need the extra because you are not a statue. And you have to be able to move in your garment. Oh my goodness. I just can't stand tight armholes. Or something that binds me at the shoulder. I don't like that either. Alrighty. Wrap it around your finger. That helps hold that extra fabric on the back. Yep. This is where the fullness is. It's on the back side. See, it's fitting just fine. There you go. Double notches. That's the back. That's the back. And this is the front. And we have right sides together. If you don't have right sides staring at each other, you got your sleeve in wrong. Let's go sew it in. This is my first stitches this morning. <laughs> so I'm going to take off my table, whatever you call that thing, because I want my arm. Now when you saw me put the hem in the bottom of the sleeve, most people will probably be able to get their sleeve up on this, but I can't. But I can definitely get my armhole on it. So, I'm going to open it up. I sew on the garment because the sleeve inside is a little bit longer than the garment's armhole is. And the feed dogs on the bottom help feed it evenly. So, that's just how I do it. I'll pull out my pins as I get to them. I don't start at the seam lines. I just start someplace flat. <laughs> and I am going to use my zigzag stitch for this. Stitch length of three and just a narrow zigzag. I'm going to put it 2.7 and 1.5. So I have a narrow zigzag I'm putting this in with. Because your sleeve does get a lot of movement. Take your pins out before you get to them. Five-eighths inch is your seam allowance. This is my Bernina B740. If you have an older machine, a cheaper machine, congratulations. I have some very new embroidery machines, well, pretty new, and some newer sewing machines, and I swear, my older ones sew better than the new ones do. So don't think, oh, I should have a fancier machine. No, you shouldn't. All you need is a straight stitch. Make sure you're not sewing something you don't want sewn under there. You know, get all the way around this and find out that the wrist of your sleeve has been sewn into the uh, shoulder of your sleeve. <laughs> It can happen. <laughs> oh, it can happen. Go slow, go slow. It's not a race. You do not want to hit a pin. The older machines could jump a pin easier than these new machines can. You know, the new machines are all computerized, so... They think they're smarter than you are. They aren't. <laughs> they try to make you think they are. I'm up here at the uh, shoulder. And you see um, Peggy Sager sew her sleeves in. She sews hers in flat, like I was telling you a while ago. 
and she sews them in with a surgery. And she puts that sleeve in. <laughs> Lickety split. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, I did not do that. I will surge around this sleeve once I get it sewn in. All right, before I check, <laughs> I'm going to bring it over there and I'm going to show it to you. I'm just going to pick it up and bring it to the camera. Here's the armhole of the garment. You can see how big my zigzag is. It's very little. There's where I started and ended. You can tell that this is the back of the garment because of the double notch. Let's turn it around and look at the front. Here's the front. This is under my arm. There's the single notch. And this is the shoulder. So you can see it looks real good from inside. Let's look at the sleeve and see if there's any bubbles or bumps and I do get them. You want it completely totally flat. No ripples. No folds. And you don't have to gather this knit sleeve. I bet they'll tell you to in the pattern. But you saw that I did it with no gathers. It was not necessary. Alright, let's turn it around and look at it on the front. How awesome is that? Look at that almost matches up, that green <laughs> leaf. Oh, and here's the other side. See? Slow and steady wins the race. And you can see how I've got a little bit of the color showing on the garment part. And that is absolutely no problem. Okay, I'm going to go sew the other sleeve in. It's just like that sleeve. Here it is. The dot. You can see how I have it pinned in. I'm going to go sew it in. And then all we have left to do on this garment is hem the bottom of it. So it's try on time. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, I think it's super cute myself. It's the only thing in my closet. I'm going to have one other thing that has long sleeves. But I like that they're narrow at my wrist, and they're not just real baggy. I can pull them up if I want to. <laughs> okay, now, you may not have to do what I'm doing now, but I always do this because, you know, I have one uh, shoulder lower, one higher, but actually the difference is in my hip. I uh, went to, um, oh, some kind of a bone doctor one time or something, and um, I was walking into his office, and he said, you're a half inch off in your hip. I'm like, how rude. So I told you about my metal yard stick. You can get this at Home Depot or Lowe's or someplace like that. These are awesome. I really like them. So what I do, since I don't have Jerry here right now, is I stand in my mirror, and I just put it up next to me like this. And I will check the front and the side, jarm down, the side, the side, and the back. I have measured this all the way around, and it appears to me that I've got a little bit longer here, which I would, because this is my low shoulder. This is my, my whole body's one half inch off on this side. So this usually is a little bit longer. So I'll probably just fold this up. Let's see if I can see exactly. You know, you can't look right on the measure this way. But you can get close and the numbers are big. So this is like hmm, 29 and a half off the floor. And everything else, the whole rest of the way around is 30. So I will simply fold this up one half inch higher and then ease it down, you know, you know what I mean, taper it. <laughs> Look at the neck. You saw me hem it. I push the seam allowance and the sleeve toward the sleeve, but you can push it toward the garment if you want to. To me, it's going to go to the sleeve anyway, so just put it there to start with. But you can see the sleeves. You can see the neckline. You saw me finish it. I stitched it down. You can see 
the sleeves that I hemmed and I stitched those down. Let's go hem up this thing. This is how I take that half inch off. I just come up a half inch over here where I'm a half inch shorter on this side of my body. So I came up a half inch right here and then I just gently went over here to the center front and then here I just gently went over to the center back. So then this side will end up being a half inch shorter than the other side on the garment, but it will look right on my body. <laughs> I know! <laughs> so now I'm going to take my little cutter and I'm just going to cut this off. I'm going to show you now that one side is a half inch shorter than the other. I line up the side seams up here under the arm but you can see that one side's a half inch longer than the other now. Since this is one and a half inch hem, I'm going to use my half inch steam machine. Do you need to buy half inch and quarter inch? No. You buy whatever size you want. <laughs> but I would recommend you get some because it's just amazing for putting hems in. Okay, so I've got this wrapped around the end of my board and I'm going to get my little measuring hoosie. I'm going to put it on one and a half and I am going to cut my seam allowance. I'll show you up close. I'm going to cut my seam allowance at one and a half. I'll show you real close what I just did. I cut this seam allowance right there. See? because I'm going to fold it the opposite direction of whichever way this one goes and I'm going to fold it up and then they won't be on top of each other and my um, hem will lay much flatter without that bump in it. So I know the top of it goes backwards and don't go by down here. Look up at the top where the sleeve is and the bust dart is and make sure you get it the right direction. And then I always trim it. I trim the serger thread off and some of the um, edge of it off because I don't need that extra thread in my hem either. So this is going to go this way. Take a pin and pin your long seam the way it's supposed to go so you don't accidentally make the part that I just cut. Make sure you don't make it go the wrong way. Alright, that's going to go that way. So I'm going to put this. Let me tell you something about this steam machine. Sometimes <laughs> you'll be in the middle of the roll and suddenly the sticky part will stick to the other side of the paper. Hey, how come I don't have any heat here? Well, because I didn't heat my iron up. Something I do when I'm doing a woven, you may have seen me do these before, it's a file folder. You can buy them in these fancy little white paper things. They sell them Sewing with Nancy, Nancy's Notions, and they sell them at Annie's and some other places. Um, use a file folder. It works even better. You don't need this, this hook up here. It just gets in your way. But I use this for wovens, and then I'll just put it down and fold my hem up to it and press, fold, press, fold, press, fold, press all the way around and then this is your measurement paper. But I only do that on wovens. So the first thing I do on knits is put the steam a seam. So let's try again. Now I can hear my iron sizzling. Whew. How about that for some steam my friends. Now remember you just iron it down a little bit without the steam at first. You don't want it to be permanent yet. Roll your garment around and around the end of your ironing board. And I know mine looks different. That's because this is, uh, I use this wide end here for quilting, ironing, quilting backs and quilts. It has the uh, 
rounded and also But this is the one I use the most, and since I'm so wide, my fabrics go around it. <laughs> and if I need to press up into a neck or into a sleeve or something, I just um, use my sleeve board. Stay. Everything wants to move, you know. Murphy's Law. Trim. Trim a little bit, trim a little bit. Be sure you keep it on the garment, not off the garment, or when you press it up, you're going to have this stuff all over your iron. You can get it off your iron, but it's easier to just not get it on there to start with. Okay, that's all I need of that. Make sure you got it ironed down pretty good or it won't leave the glue behind. It's just a line of glue is what you're doing here. Press your seam, lay it out of here, my center front and center back. All right, tear the paper off. Paper come off, come off, come off. Very good. Now I start at the side seams. I start because this is kind of a little round on the bottom and it's just not completely flat so you're going to have to fiddle with it a little bit and like scooch it and crunch it and you know what I mean. Now I have a half inch line of glue all the way around the bottom of this blouse and I'm looking to see which way my one and a half inch seam allowance is supposed to go down here. You don't have to pull that thread out. I always do side seam, side seam, center front, center back. Then I do in between those places. There, that's one and a half. You can't just instantly do this. <laughs> Although I've seen Angela Wolf do it. She just pulls it. <laughs> She's like, okay, that's done. Now, don't iron the head of your pin in there. That's not smart. <laughs> All right, one and a half. Now, when you do it with the steam, it's going to stay pretty good. But you can still get it back up again if you need to until you hold the steam down there for, you know, 10 seconds maybe. Okay, now this one's going to go the other way. Let's get that pin out of there so we don't iron over it. Now that should be one and a quarter, one and a half. And it is. Okay. So this is my right side. This is the side that I trimmed a half inch shorter. You got to remember what side of your body your boobs are on <laughs> when you're doing this. <laughs> Uh, they aren't on the side, Joy. Well, they're on the side seam at the front, so they sort of are. <laughs> okay, let's fold this up to one and a half inches. Now I'm at center back. Center back, and I'm doing it next. That's center back. 
So now, I'll probably have a little bit of fullness from the side seam to the center back, but I'm just going to, it doesn't look like I'm going to though. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't, depends on the cut. So I'm going to do this, one and a half. And the uh, steam seam kind of sticks down by itself, really. It's really great stuff. See, right here I have a little bit of fullness, right here. I should have folded the paper pattern up and uh, made that fit there. Yep, I should have. I'm just going to stretch it a little bit. Don't smoosh it and, and make bumps and lumps. Make it flat and smooth. Even if you have to go, take more in at your seam allowance. Alrighty. See, all I'm doing is measuring. So from center back to this seam allowance, we're done. We're going to hold that down and give it some steam. Press the seam down there while we're at it and get this fold out of here while we're at it. I'm going to let it sit for a minute and cool off. Remember, hot forgets, cold remembers. Hot forgets, cold remembers. Hot forgets, cold remembers. Make a song and sing along. Put on your music. If I wasn't talking to you, oh, I would totally have my 50s music on. Or I'd have ABBA on. Elvis Presley, they're still trying to say he's not dead. Are they ever going to give up on that? This video is over two hours long, so I've got to speed up part of it for you. I'm doing the same thing here. Measure, measure, measure. The paper has already been taken off of the seam seam. I'm making sure it's all straight. Then I'm going to hit it with an iron, but not for very long, because you don't want to make it terribly permanent in case you decide, oh wait, I'd rather have a one inch hem. And you can heat this stuff up and unstick it and redo it. But, oh, I love this stuff. So, I decided to go ahead and use my cover stitch. So, I put this side underneath and decided that it needs to come over here this far. So, I put that piece of green masking tape there as my guide. Then I turned it over and I'm sewing it from the front. You have to sew it from the top to get your two straight lines of stitching. If you sewed it from here, you'd have all of that zigzaggy stuff that goes on the back there. I put three spools of black thread on it, and it's actually behaving. <laughs> this is a Cover Pro 1000 CPX. I've had it for years, but you have to show where your guide is going to be because the company that made this machine didn't know how fat your hem was, so they didn't put marks everywhere. I think this was about $900 twice that now. That was several years ago. So what's it doing? It's sewing this zigzaggy chain stitch on the back. You can see it there on the white dots. And on the front it's sewing two lines of straight stitches. And this will stretch. This hem stretches. That's what's so nice about it. You need to do a hem that's straight though. If you've got a hem that's like, you've got to go over corners, it, it's difficult. There's a way to do it, but I'm not doing that today. Check the back and make sure it's, it's sewing on the hem and not up there on your blouse. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. 
You need the clear foot because when you come back around, you need to sew over about an inch or inch and a half of where you started sewing. So you need to be able to see through your foot. And of course that's extra. Here's where I started right here. Notice these two threads are on top. Here's one thread on the back. Now, this is the trickiest, this is the trickiest, trickiest part of a cover stitch. <laughs> and you can learn it online. You can look up how to use a cover pro, a cover stitch machine, and you can see people do it online. So I'm not going to pull these threads to the back. I suppose I could. Let me see if I can. I usually don't, but let's see if I can pull them. Hey, look there. Hey, that wasn't hard. Pull them to the back. There we go. Look at that. Hey, that was awesome. <laughs> so now I'm going to sew over. I started just before the seam line, and I'm going to sew over. I started right here. And then I went all the way around, all the way around, all the way around. I'm going to come back and I'm going to go sew over this, over this, over this, and stop right here. That's the plan. And of course, black on black. And I've got my little see-through foot. Oh my gosh, I'm doing so good. I went, went past that actually. Okay, now here's the part. This is the part that you have to know <laughs> in order to tie off your stitches. You lift your foot. You lift the needles. You get the thread to come forward to you. You cut the thread so it's not loops anymore. Then you pull backwards and sideways. <gasps> and look at what happens. Look at that. There's no thread tails on top. What I did just pulled all the tails to the back side. Is that just amazing or what? <laughs> I learned that from Glenda Sparling and from some Chinese guy on YouTube. Or Japanese guy or whatever kind of guy. Okay, so now I'm going to take these threads and I'm going to tie a knot in them. Whatever threads I can get together, I'll tie knots in those and knots in these. And the front just looks like you bought it at the store. Do you love it? Do you love it? Do you love it? I could have done the sleeves with it, but same problem with the sleeves. My sleeves are just too tiny to get over this um, arm right here. Just can't do it. And I don't want to mess with the neck because the neck is just a half inch. So usually I just do the hem of the garment. Okay. All right, my friends. This will end the Butterick 6418 sew along, fit along, finish along. <laughs> Thank you for all your very, very, very nice compliments. I really appreciate it. I told Jerry when they first started, I said, I'm afraid to look at the comments. <laughs> he said, why? I said, oh my gosh, I just hope they don't say it. It's just, they can't understand it and it's too long. And, uh, so I'm just very, very happily surprised that you have really liked the work that I did making these videos for you. So this is my number five. I just showed it to Jerry and he said, it's too full in the front. And I said, well, that's because your wife is too full in the front. <laughs> I could, you know, in my next one, take a little bit out of the side seams on the front, but I don't know, I like it loose. I like it when I, I like when I sit down and it falls to my lap. So there's the back. There's the side. There's the front. There's the other side. <laughs> It's fun, fun, fun. I want to cut out some more. I still have my little polka dots. And I have the white. And I have so, so many different colors and prints. And uh, 
I like the long sleeves. I really do. I like them. I never like long sleeves. But I think the reason I like them is they're little in the wrist. And they're not just, you know, flopping. I just ate lunch with Jerry. And they didn't bother me a bit. I cooked lunch. I ate lunch. And I never touched my sleeves. So, I really like that they're narrow like they are. So, I think I'm going to take a long break. <laughs> and um, I think there's enough of my tutorials out there now. I've been making them over the years. I've done um, Fit Nice System. I've done Sure Fit Designs. I've done several commercial patterns. I've done pants. And now I've done B6418. Remember, you don't need to have this pattern to make this shirt. You can get an ABBT at DIBY.com or whatever it is. Um, do it by yourself. DIBY Club, DIBYclub.com. You can get a free tea. And if you can't get one there, there's lots of places where you can get free tea patterns. And then you can cut it up and put whatever sleeves and whatever front and whatever back and whatever length and whatever height. And <laughs> oh. oh, it's just fun. I enjoy it so much. And Jerry says he really likes it. So that means everything to me. Trust my husband. What about you? Do you like this? <laughs> I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.